All right. So today brings us to the end of our goal planning month of October 2024. So in case you missed the previous sessions, they're available on the YouTube channel. Um, they are also available if you're part of Realty One Group Fox, then you've got the training spreadsheet that has the list of all the trainings with the training hyperlink next to it to make it really easy to find the trainings that you're looking for. But Abby usually does a pretty good job on the YouTube channel too of grouping them by, um, if you go to playlists, they're usually on the playlist or they have different colored backgrounds or thumbnails. She's pretty magical that way. So I appreciate that. It makes it easy to find. So um, in case you haven't heard me say it enough, we will start out the first five minutes by recapping and telling you that you should be setting up your goals for 2024 in the month of October. Every year, you should set up your goals for the next year by the end of October. The, the thought process behind that is that if you wait until January to set your goals, you're already behind. Okay, if we set them up in October, we start implementing them in November. Number one, we're going to finish the year strong to help us reach our 2023 goals. Number two, by December, we're going to be in the habit of doing the steps that we need to do and be set up for success so that we're putting things into contract in no or in December that are going to close in January, which is going to help us to start off our year on track, on schedule, on goal. Okay. In addition to that, you need to make sure you're tracking your numbers and that you know your numbers. You should know how many calls you're making, how many doors you're knocking, whatever your lead gen activities are, how many emails you're sending out, how many text messages, how many social media messages, um, whatever that is, how many events, right? You should be knowing what you're doing and you should be tracking those activities and the outcome of those activities. If my, um, if my, lead gen activity is open houses. I should know that every open house, I'm going to door knock a minimum of X number of doors and how many doors I knocked. I should know how many people showed up to my open house, where I promote that open house, how many social media postings I do, what I do on what days, what's getting the most interactions, what's getting the most results. You should even be tracking what days and times you're doing those open houses to see if there's consistency in the day and time of the open house to get the greatest turnout of unrepresented visitors. Okay, important key there, unrepresented visitors. Okay, what do you do after the open house to follow up? How do we get those appointments set? How do we get those people added to our database? What is that follow-up plan? How many thank you cards do you send out? How many thank you text messages do you send out? Um, and how many of those resulted in appointments, right? We should know those numbers so that you can backtrack your activities and know where something's going wrong when you're not getting the results that you want. And when you are getting the results that you want, you should be tracking so that you can duplicate it and replicate it and continue on with the years so that you can meet your goals, right? And that's the same with any lead gen activity. In addition, you should know how many appointments you have set, how many of those appointments actually showed up. Out of those ones that showed up, how many signed agreements? Out of the ones that signed agreements, how many actually went on the market or got into contract? And out of how many went into contract or went on the market, how many of those actually closed, right? We should be tracking all those things because that helps us lead to success and helps us know our conversion ratios. In addition, I've got this spreadsheet here. I will throw it in case you don't yet have it. I will throw it in the um, chat box, the link for it. It's the same spreadsheet we've been working off of all month. I tried to put it in one document so it'd make it easy to find. Um, it's got goal tracking on there. So you can track those things that I just talked about. Appointments, signatures, um, closed, track your GCI. So you know what you're on track to um, do by the end of the year. It's got lead gen tracking on there that you can tweak and change to match your lead gen types or the things that you want to be tracking with regards to lead gen. Um, so feel free to tweak it. Um, you wanna make sure you define your why and your values, which is the third tab. The fourth tab starts digging into your goals. So, right, so it sets you up on what do you need to do business expense wise in order to pay your bills? What do you need personal expense wise in order to pay your bills? And then what is your thrive goal? What do you want to accomplish this next year so that you can take it above and beyond, right? Do you want to pay off debt? Do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to pick up investment properties? Do you want to pick up a second home? Are you trying to move? Are you trying to increase your net worth, right? What are your goals on that Thrive? You're going to throw those on there. It's going to take those numbers, compute them down into, and it may be something simple. I think on there, it's got like dog, like maybe you just want a fancy dog or maybe like mine, like when I first started doing real estate full-time, my thing was like, 
I just wanted a dishwasher. We didn't have a dishwasher. It seemed like something so simple and little. We lived in a house with no dishwasher. I just wanted a dishwasher. So that was on my list of goals. So it doesn't have to be big. It could be a new car. It could be paying off a car, right? It could be paying off your credit card of $3,500. Like it doesn't have to be huge. Okay, so you're going to put that on there, it calculates it all out for you. Then you're going to move from the dream life form to the economic model, which takes that information that you put in the dream life form and breaks it down further into an economic model that's based on the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. <clears throat> on that economic model, you're going to plug in, there's some conversion ratios that you're going to plug in, as well as your average sales price, your average listing price, your average commission on a buyer and a seller transaction. If you don't know those numbers, you don't have them, you're a new agent, you haven't been tracking, you can just use the defaults that are set up in there. Totally okay to use the defaults. Um, and that's going to spit out how many appointments you need to make, right? Or how many appointments you need to have. How many of those should result in signed either buyer representation agreements or signed listing agreements? And then how many of those are actually going to close? So it's going to break it down further, not just say you need this many closings, but you actually need to set this many appointments so that it results in this many closings. Okay, that's where those conversion ratios come into play. You're going to take that then once we have those closings, we're going to plug it into that GPS or your goals, priority strategies that sets you up for the year. What's your goal for the year and what are your strategies to reach that goal? What types of lead generation are you going to do in order to take it from, I need 17 appointments. That's what our example is. 17 appointments for 2024 in order to get 12 closings. What are we actually going to do to do that? So that GPS breaks it down into lead gen activities. You should always have um, your sphere of influence or your database as one legion and then leads from listings as your second. You're going to choose three additional methods. If you're confused at what you should do for lead generation, if you go to my YouTube channel last December, I've done it since, but not as in depth as last December, we did 12 days of lead generation last December. So there's lots of different methods in there. You can watch those videos and see what appeals to you and what you think sounds like fun. It's things like social media, open houses, cold calling, events, um, a farm, right? So there's all these different ways of generating leads. There are no wrong answers to that, just so you know. Like there's no wrong or right way to generate leads outside of making sure you're working your sphere of influence and leads from listings. Other than that, the other three, no wrong way to do that. You're going to focus on 2024 on your sphere of influence or your database, your leads from listings, and that first main lead gen source. It might be open houses, it might be farm, it might be social media, who knows? You're gonna focus in on that. You're gonna create those systems and processes around that lead gen method. Once you're implementing that, once you're consistent in it, then we're gonna start focusing in on the next lead gen method, right? So we're gonna earn the right to move on. We still wanna dabble, so like, in our example over here on our GPS, it says that um, we're going to database leads from listings. I put open houses, farm, and social media. So I'm going to start rolling out with my farm at the beginning of 2024, even come November. And I'm still going to be posting on social media and trying to use that for Legion, but I'm not putting my focus and energy into that. Most of my focus and energy is going to go into open houses, into creating those systems and processes so that I know I have an open house in a week. Here's my seven step process to get to the end of the week. And here's my follow up process. And I'm going to be consistent in executing that and consistent in the follow up. Once I do that, then I'm going to continue to host those open houses. But my systems and processes are in place. It's going to roll like a well oiled machine. And then I'm going to start focusing more in on my farm. OK, so that's how that works. So you should have a five lead gen activities. OK, we're going to roll from that into we talked about our growth plan and setting up your calendar for success. So you are going to um, figure out each month what you're going to do on a personal and professional level in order to move your life and your business forward. Might be things like reading a book, might be attending summit in February. It might be um, getting a designation as part of your license. It might be attending a um, personal retreat on the personal side of things, right? in September, who knows, like maybe a yoga retreat, who knows what might be on there. It might just be reading a book. It might be digging into something a little deeper. So you've got all those options on there. Maybe you want to take a parenting class so you can throw those on your growth plan. In addition, 
you're going to get a 12 month calendar. It could go on the wall. It could just be printed pages. And you're going to start laying out your year on that calendar, marking up your vacations, right? Your activities and events that you have to do on that calendar first, your fun time off on there, your holidays. When are you working? When are you not working? Then if you're doing open houses as part of your legion, you're going to start drawing out how many open houses am I going to do on a monthly basis and pre-plan your whole year with those open houses. Or if you're doing a farm, what activities and events, when are you walking your farm, when do you need to put together those mailers, all that stuff's going to go on that calendar. And it might be a process to develop that calendar. Okay. Then we talked about how we're going to move it to that 12 week plan, right? We're going to take our goals, priorities, and strategies, and we're going to break it down in 12 week chunks, right? So then that would be the 12 week plan where we have our 12 week goal. If we have 17 appointments, then hey, October, November, I want three appointments. So I have one property in contract leading into January so that it closes in January. And then here are the steps that I need to do over the next 12 weeks in order to accomplish this goal, which helps me to accomplish my 2024 goal. Okay, again, I have these all in detail. We did a full training on all of these. Then yesterday we covered the 411s. Oh, in the 12-week plan, you're going to reevaluate every 12 weeks. We're going to come back and revisit this at the end of December to set up our January, February, March. And that leaves you in a position that you may need to pivot. Okay, so if we're way behind on goal, we may need to adjust what we're looking to do, um, what our activities are, or even what that goal is. And if we're way ahead of goal, then we may also need to adjust up. Maybe we didn't aim high enough. Okay. Then we're going to move it to our 411, which breaks it down into weekly activities. So, right, we have our annual goal here, which stays on the 17 appointments to equal 12 plus closings. We're going to move that into what do I need to do in December, right? Um, I, this originally was November. Watch the training yesterday. I took you through November, December. What do I need to do in the month? in order to help me reach my goal. And then we're gonna break that down into weekly activities so that we know what we're doing this week. At the end of this week, we're gonna relook at this. We should be keeping it in the front of our mind, print it up, put it on your desktop, put it where you're gonna be. This is what you're gonna work off of. We'll show you that as we dive into our calendar here in a moment. And then each week you're gonna reevaluate this. This, did I do this? Did I um, locate all of my contacts? right? Did I talk to 25 people about real estate this week? And then what are the steps I need to take in order to reach these goals this next week? So each week, we're going to reevaluate this. Please don't get really proactive at the beginning of the month and we plan out all four weeks of activities. Because what will inevitably happen is that you won't get through all your activities this week. And then they're just going to start dogpiling on top of you come next week and week three. And then you're going to feel overwhelmed and buried and like you're never going to get to the top and then you'll just stop and bail and quit working. So we don't want you to do that. We only want you to focus on what you're going to do this week. At the end of this week, we're going to evaluate where do we need to be next week. OK, I gave you an example of both a professional side and a personal side so you can see what that might look like. And then today we're going to move into time blocking. Do I have any questions on the recap? All right, today we're gonna to move into time blocking. So the next step is, right, we have these activities that we need to do this week as part of our professional or even our personal, right? And we need to put those on a calendar. So the next tabby on our spreadsheet is the ideal calendar. Um, if you didn't get it and you joined a little late, I can put this, I'll put the link for the spreadsheet in the chat box again, because I know it doesn't appear when you show up after I already put it. So it's in there. So draw out what your ideal calendar looks like, right? That's where I would start with time blocking. I think it makes it a little easier, a little bit more tangible. You can utilize this one. You could print up just a weekly calendar with time blocks in it. I like like 15 minute increments on mine, but you might find one that's got 30 minute increments. So whatever works for you, print it up and kind of think about like, okay, what's my ideal calendar? When we go to time block, we want to start with our time off. Please, please hear me on this. Take days off. It's so important to your mental well-being. It's important to your family and friends. Take time off. Hey, if you're doing open houses 
and you're like, wow, I do open houses on Saturday. So like most people take the weekend off. I guess I don't get a day off. I only get one day off. I can take Sunday off. No, take a weekday off. It's okay, right? Like we can run our business. We're business owners. We can do whatever we want. Um, I'm encouraging you to take two days off. It doesn't have to be Saturday and Sunday. We don't have to roll with like the typical like work week or whatever, right? We can change it. So when I was in full production on my real estate side of things, I took Sunday and Monday off. I was doing open houses or other things on Saturdays. So I took Sundays and Mondays off. It worked really well for me. It gave me a day that my family was out of the house during the week, which was kind of nice too. So I had it by myself so I could have like personal time or get caught up on other things that needed done. So as you can see on my ideal calendar, <coughs> although I miscolored a couple of things, um, number one, I even put like personal stuff on here, right? Like my workouts on the top of the day, I have my days off here. I have that I went to church and that I went horseback riding and horseback riding on Mondays right? And then my workout. So my personal time is on there. Then after that, you want to put your family activities on there and your can't miss activities like meetings or appointments, right? So, um, so put your personal time on there, your days off, mark those off. And then like, um, my daughter at the time that I did this, I think I did this ideal calendar back in like 2020, she had a writing lesson. So I marked that off on my calendar so that that was marked off. So I knew what I was doing on that. So family activities go on there as well as like must do can't miss appointments like the NSCAR meetings on my calendar. Um, the Realty One Group office meeting is on my calendar. I think it's at the wrong time currently just because I didn't want to rearrange everything for this example. Um, so right. So those are on there and notice it's kind of color coded. I also have check email as a meeting. That's like a non-negotiable something I can't miss. So I have check email on there. So I have certain times during the day where I'm going to be checking my emails so that I know that I don't have to be at the beck and call of my phone every second of every day and that there's a pre-planned time on my calendar where I know mentally that I will have time to check my email. Okay, beginning of the day, end of the day, and in the middle of the day. Okay. So time off. Family, friend, personal activities go on your calendar first. Then we're going to put our meetings and like must attends, those things that can't be moved or aren't negotiable. Okay, next, what we're going to put on our calendar is our lead generation time. What are you doing for lead generation? When are you planning to do that? Okay, and in addition to lead gen, I also recommend putting lead follow up on there. So lead generation and then lead follow up. And those are two separate things. Okay. So our lead gen is where we're generating those new leads, right? We're going to be out door knocking for our open house. We're going to be um, door knocking our farm. We're going to be making those calls, right? Talking to people. Our follow-up time is, hey, those people I talked to yesterday or a week ago that I was supposed to call back today, that's what happens during that follow-up time. Or hey, I talked with somebody today and they wanted me to send something to them in the mail or send out an email. That all happens during follow-up time. So I highly recommend putting two hours a day minimum in for your lead generation, probably five days a week. Okay, notice here I've got lead gen, lead gen on this calendar, just so you know, it's set up funky. It's Thursday, Friday, and then start, well, it starts on Thursday. But don't ask me why I did that. There was a reason in 2020. I don't know what it was now. Feel free to, again, you can save the spreadsheet, uh, make a copy of it, and then it'll allow you to edit it. So you can come in here and change those days. Um, so I've got Legion on Thursday, Legion on Friday, Legion on Tuesday and Wednesday. My Legion on Saturday is called door knocking and then the open house. Okay. Open house is actually more of a marketing activity than lead generation only because we're opening a door and we're hoping that people show up. We're not actively trying to seek people out, but that door knocking piece of it where you might door knock around your open house, that would be the, the prospecting or the lead generation piece. You probably are going to generate leads for your open house, but it's dependent on people actually walking through the door. Okay. So lead generation. Now with lead generation, just so everybody knows, I'm a big proponent of having goal-based lead generation rather than just lead generation generating for the sake of lead generating. Okay. I'm not one of those people that's like, hey, I've got it blocked from 11 
30 to 1230 or whatever, right? Whatever time it's on there for. And I have to make phone calls that entire time. No, if my goal for lead generation is I'm calling through my sphere of influence with the intention of talking with five people today, as soon as that fifth person answers, I can now give myself permission to stop lead generation and move on to the next thing or take 10 or 15 minutes back for myself, right? But if I didn't get to five people, that may mean that down here on this open time that I have, I may need to block some more lead gen because I did not reach my goal for the day. Okay, so I'm a big proponent of goal. If my door knocking up here is set for two hours before the open house or an hour before the open house, the door knock on 20 doors, and I can knock that out in 30 minutes. Fabulous. If it takes me a little longer, then I'm going to keep knocking until I knock out all 20 doors. Okay, so I like goals. If my appointment for this week is lead generation to set three appointments, right? So if we go back to my 411 and it said, oh, I changed it up um, because we were tweaking it as we went. But if my monthly goal for December is one buyer appointment and one listing appointment, and um, as I'm working through my lead generation in like the first week of the month, I set those appointments and I'm good, then I don't necessarily have to continue on with that if I don't want to. I can change that to something else. Okay, so you can make it goal-based or you can be like, man, that was so easy to set those appointments when I'm actually doing my lead generation like I'm supposed to, that I'm gonna continue on and man, I can probably blow my goal out of the water. Maybe I can close 12 transactions in the first quarter instead of 12 transactions in the first year, right? So you can keep plugging away. Follow-up time, I highly recommend putting um, 30 minutes to an hour of follow-up time on your schedule. So ideally, I would say lead generation, you want two hours a day. Follow-up, you probably want it at an hour a day. And again, that's time to connect with people that you talked with a week ago, two days ago that wanted you to follow up with them. That's going to be that time to make those phone calls again, as well as when we talk to somebody today and they're like, oh man, yeah, can you send me some information in the mail or can you shoot me over an email with that information? That's my time that I'm going to follow up. I don't want to interrupt my lead gen with then opening up my email and trying to send emails out because now I'm going to get distracted with the other things that are in that inbox. So I'm going to hang on to that until that follow up time. Okay. So personal um, time off, then personal activities, um, meetings, must attend events and activities. Then we're going to uh, time block our lead generation and our follow up. And then we want to plug in the next um, step that you're going to do is either, and there's no wrong or right way, we're either going to plug in some open appointment time slots or some admin time or both of those at the same time. So as you notice here, I've got like gray admin time on here in different time slots. It's time to take care of admin type activities. So those would be things like creating those systems and processes around our legion. If my legion activity is open houses, what am I doing in that time leading up to the open house? And what am I doing with the follow-up? What is that plan and process going to be? And then time to execute that those plans and processes. So if I need to create flyers for my open house or create my um, online kind of uh, Google Drive that has all my information for the open house in it, that's going to happen during that admin time. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to plug in open appointment time slots. And these would be for buyer appointments, for listing appointments, for showing property appointments. And then that way I know that if I'm on the phone doing lead gen and somebody's like, oh, yeah, we were thinking about selling our house. I can look at my calendar and go, great. Would two would Wednesday or Thursday be better? And they're going to be like, oh, Thursday. Perfect. Would you like to meet at two o'clock or three o'clock? Right. I already know on my calendar, I've got those time slots plugged into that. If those times don't work for them, then I may need to tweak it and change it just a little bit. Right. I even have like an appointment time slot on Monday. I think that's Monday, Tuesday at like in the evening. So I could be like, oh, perfect. I'm available Tuesday evening. Does that work for you? How about seven o'clock? Right. I've already got them in there. So now I can change that open appointment time slot into whoever I'm meeting with. So pre-plan those appointments on your calendar so that you have time available for those appointments. There's nothing worse than being on the phone with somebody who wants to sit down with you for a buyer consultation or a listing appointment and be like, 
oh my gosh, I blocked my whole week out and I have no spare time and I have no appointments on there. And gosh, I don't have time to meet with you without totally changing something else, right? So plug those times in on there so that you're ready to go for those appointments. Okay. Notice I've got things like dinner on there and family night, right? So those are all part of those things that you're going to book at the beginning with the your days off and then your personal time so that you don't override that time. And if you're like, Amy, I don't have a family. Okay, well, you have friends. Like, go do things with your friends. What are your hobbies? What are your activities? Make sure you put those on your calendars. I can't stress that enough to make sure that you have time for yourself. Okay, so days off, personal time, meetings and appointments, then your lead gen and your follow-up, then your admin time and your open appointment time slots. And that really should take you to the end of your week as far as your ideal calendar. So you can draw that out, okay? Now, um, when it comes to actual time blocking, I don't care if you use a written calendar or a digital calendar, it really makes no difference. You can kind of do this on your regular calendar. So if we pull up a calendar, I usually have like a fake calendar pulled up, but let's look at my real calendar, if it'll open. So see, I time block my regular calendar on here too for different activities and events. And it's all color coded and I put it on there. The nice thing about a digital calendar, I used a, a, a written calendar for a long time um, because it was really hard for me to transition over the digital calendar. I liked having the written calendar on my desk where I could look at it and physically see it. But it made it hard because we have this rule when we, we put together our calendar that's called erase and replace, right? So if we move something, we have to put it someplace else. We just can't eliminate it. Right. So if I was on my ideal weekly calendar and um, I took this appointment time slot, this open appointment and put something else there, I need to find another slot for that open appointment on my calendar. I can't just make it go away. OK, just because I found something that might be more important than that doesn't mean that I can just poof, it's gone. Like we need to move it. We need to move that admin time or that lead generation time. Right. So we need to move it around. I found that hard to do on a written calendar. Um, because oftentimes I was doing it in pen. I like to use colored pens or colored pencils. They don't erase really well. So it made it hard to move stuff around. I tried using stickies for a while, like colored stickies with the full like sticky surface. So I could move those around and it just became complicated. So finally I transitioned over to a digital calendar. The nice thing about that is if I'm like, Hey, I need to put something else into this time slot. I can just click and like move this someplace else. So it doesn't go away. Okay, right? Magically. Like this one here is double booked. So I need to move that someplace else. In fact, I can move that there because this is no longer here. Only this event. Right? So you can move things around on the digital calendar. If there's other people involved in those appointments, then it, you can move. Uh, it uh, notifies them as well. So that's why I kind of like the digital calendar, but I have no no feelings one way or the other of whether you should go digital or paper. Do what works for you and what you're going to utilize. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how you set up your calendar. Start with an ideal calendar. And then at the beginning of each week or at the end of the previous week, right? When we go to review that 411 to be like, hey, what did we accomplish this week? And what are we doing next week? Then we're also going to look at our calendar and say, what do we need on our calendar? What are we missing? What needs to be changed? How do we need to look at this next week? Because each week is individual. I um, caution on setting up too many just regular reoccurring. For a while, I took my ideal calendar and I put it on my digital calendar with reoccurring appointments. So it had this all like admin time is reoccurring. My lead generation is reoccurring. And what happened was I stopped paying attention to it because I stopped reviewing it because it was just there all the time. So I kind of caution you against setting it up as reoccurring. It sounds really efficient. And like, that sounds like a good idea, but it can make you kind of numb to your calendar. So each week you may want to look at your calendar with a fresh week and be like, okay, where am I plugging in my Legion time? What are my days off? Right. And then taking the time to actually plug those things in on your calendar on a weekly basis um, so that you can kind of plan it out. And then I would recommend taking it a step further that we're going to look back at that 411. You do this first so that we have, okay, well, what are my activities that I'm going to do to drive this forward? 
right? Oh, I need to create a system for interacting with my Met database. Okay, well, I want to send out newsletters. So I'm going to uh, pre-plan. Um, what is this? This is October. No, or we're going to create November newsletter. Right. If we're going to send out an email newsletter, we probably need to create that newsletter. So we're going to put that in there. And then on my calendar, then when I'm setting up my week for next week, I'm going to look at that 411 and say, hey, one of these admin times needs to be for creating that newsletter. So here inside of this admin, if I was on my regular like digital calendar or whatever, I might go in there and tweak it either under notes or at the title. And I might say um, create news letter, right? So I might put that in on my calendar. So same thing here. If I was setting up admin time for next week, I may look at, um, you know, like, well, let's look at Friday at two o'clock. I may put in admin time there and I may say create November newsletter, right? And then, oops, I can't spell. So don't hold that against me. And then I have it set up where I've got um, the different calendars for different things. So you can color code your calendars. So that would be like real estate stuff for me. So that would be red. That's accurate, right? So now that's on my calendar. So not only do I have that admin time on my calendar, but all I have to do is look at my calendar to know exactly what it is that I should be doing during that time slot. It makes it really easy. It pops up notifications on my phone that says, hey, it's two o'clock on Friday. It's time to create your newsletter. And I know exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> Any questions on that? I do have the chat box open too. So if you would need to stay muted because you're loud, you can throw them in the chat box. Um, Don't time block your entire day. Please leave gaps and spaces. Okay. See gaps and spaces because inevitably something's going to run over. Something's going to come up that you didn't think about. Something's going to happen. You're going to need to move this input new leads into spreadsheet to another block because something came up here. So we want to leave that time available for you to be able to do that. So don't block off your entire day. Every second of the day should not be sucked up with time. And put in there like when you're going to eat lunch, right? Like lunch is important. And if we time block our whole day and we leave off lunch, um, so there maybe should be a gap between maybe lead gen and follow-up or between follow-up and admin where I'm going to eat some food. Nutrition's important. Um, getting up and like walking around is important. So like schedule that into your time as well, or just earmark some blank time so that when you have downtime, you know that, man, I can get up and like walk around the block or go do something to like free up my mind and get focused for the next step. Okay. Leave gaps and spaces floating around so that you don't feel crunched. Okay. Um, story. So I, um, when I was new at this time blocking thing, I was really good at time blocking for a while. And then I strayed away from it. Cause that's what we do with most of our habits, right? Like sometimes we get really good at it. We focus in on it. Cause we're like, this is really important. And then time and life and things get in the way and you start paying, stop paying attention to it. Remember I told you I had like put my calendar on autopilot. So it had a lot of reoccurring things that appeared every week. So I stopped paying attention to it. Then I, my life felt chaotic. Like I had the same number of things that I was supposed to be doing. There was nothing changed. I had kids that had activities. I had family activities. I had things going on that needed to happen, grocery store, whatever. But I wasn't looking at my calendar on a regular basis. And I was constantly feeling like I was forgetting something that I was not, like somebody would call and be like, hey, can we meet up this week? I'd be like, yeah, totally we can. I just don't know where. Let's plug you in there and hope there was nothing else going on, right? Like it just became chaos. And when you take it and you put it on a calendar, which, you know, people feel this way about their finances too, like, oh, a budget, it's scary, but no, it just tells you what you got going on. So it feels less chaotic. So I promise, try the time blocking and put it on a calendar, put it on a piece of paper, put it on digital. So you know what you have going on. You'll have the same number of things that you would have to do, whether you were putting it on the calendar or not, but I promise you, you'll feel more relaxed and at ease because you'll know that everything is taken care of and everything has a time that it's going to happen. So use your calendar. It's magical. Uh, Ed says he's always called the blank space on the calendar is white space, right? It's always, to, it's easy to feel that we need to fill the white space. So yeah, don't feel like you got to fill that white space. 
It's good. It's good for you. Any other questions, thoughts, ahas from today's training? That's all I got for you guys today. The last, the last part there, uh, Amy, is just that as we're planning for like listing appointments, um, if we go on two listing appointments, what's our listing appointments to listings taken ratio, or, or listings appointments taken to listings sold ratio, and and just if we go on one listing appointment, we don't receive it, then that's none, right? Yes. Just planning that in. Yeah. A great class. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Great information. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. In the chat box is the attendance link for the attendance spreadsheet. You can feel free to log your attendance. As always, there's a little box on there if you want to uh, make suggestions for trainings as we put together the next schedule for the beginning of the year. Throw them in there and stay tuned because I'm working on a fun training for the end of the year. Like we did the 12 days of lead gen last year. We're going to do something fun this year too. So I've got kind of a plan for that. I think it'll be fun and exciting. I got a new book. Um, so stay tuned for that. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We have our HOA forms. We'll be talking about HOA forms tomorrow at 9 a.m. from the car forms library so that you can feel comfortable and confident when you have a transaction, either a listing or a buyer in an HOA. Fabulous. Thanks everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Have a fabulous day and hopefully it's sunny at your house. Thanks, Thank Amy. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye, Amy. <laughs>